Magic is real. It is something that exists. But what exactly is it? Magic involves asking the jinns to do something for you. The sorcerer, he utilizes these jinn to make it appear as if he's doing something supernatural. You, you might see a person flying in the air and the jinn is only carrying him. You might see him bring something out of nothing. Out of thin air, he'll just pick something up and he has something in his hand. Where did it come from? The jinn was able to bring it to him instantaneously. So it's something physical for the jinn, but for us it's supernatural. So the black magician, what he does is, he appeases the jinn. He offers his sacrifices to the jinn. He worships the jinn. And because of that veneration, in return, the jinn helps him out. And this is the essence of black magic. Therefore, magic which is able to cause an effect on someone, or is able to procure something out of nothing, this type of magic is an example of blatant, open shirk. No person can practice magic and be a Muslim at the same time. Why? Because magic means he must worship other than Allah. Magic is used in all societies and cultures. And it is rampant all over the world under different names. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly states in the Quran that magic is kufr. The jinn at the time of Sulaiman, he was given control over the jinn by Allah's permission. And this was a power that no one else before him or after him had. As for the magicians in our times, they do not have the power to control. No, they appease the jinns. They themselves become lower than the jinn. They worship the jinn. And then the jinn gives them what they want. So Allah describes this in the Quran. And He says, Sulaiman did not disbelieve. Rather it was the shayateen, the shaitans. They were the ones who disbelieved. How? They were the ones who taught mankind magic. Because what the people had accused Sulaiman was that they said Sulaiman is a black magician. That's why he can control the jinn. So magic and whoever practices it, magic is a branch of disbelief, of kufr. And whoever practices it has nullified, has cancelled, has abrogated his testimony of faith. In another, another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ clearly pointed out that magic is shirk. Sunan al-Nisa'i, the Prophet ﷺ said, that whoever ties some knots and blows in them. You know how the voodoo and the magicians, they do it. They tie their knots, they tie pieces of hair. They take small dolls and they do this and that with it. Whoever does this, then he has committed magic. And whoever commits magic has committed shirk. Clear-cut authentic hadith. Whoever practices magic has committed shirk. It's right here in the books. In yet another hadith, we find that the Prophet ﷺ said that magic is one of the biggest sins in Islam. For he said, avoid the seven deadly sins. The first one is shirk. The second one, magic. Showing you how dangerous and how evil black magic is. There are many types of magic. One type of magic is that you summon the jinn to attack another person or to take their possession or properties. Another type of magic is when you tell the jinn to overtake, to possess another person's body. So that person will lose consciousness and the jinn will take over. And this also is a type of black magic. Yet another type of black magic is what we call voodoo. Where you take a piece of hair or a nail or something and you tie knots around it or you blow on it. This too is a type of magic. Another type of magic is those who utilize jinns to predict the future. The astrologers and those who look into crystal balls or those who try to read the future through cards. And one type of magic is astrology as well. Looking into the stars, trying to predict the future. All of these types of deeds, all of them involve the jinn. There is no act of this nature except that the jinn are there. The Prophet ﷺ described these people is that the jinns, they're hearing the angels talk in the sky. The, the angels, Allah decides something, and so the angels talk amongst themselves, Allah has decided that so and so will die. So the, so the jinn overhears it, eavesdropping on it. Therefore he comes down to the black magician, to the astrologer, to the sorcerer, to the fortune teller, 
And he tells the fortune teller what he overheard from the angels. But along with that one truth, he adds a hundred lies. Astrology is supposedly the science or the art of looking at the stars and trying to predict the future based upon the movement and the patterns of the stars. So astrology is different from a science called astronomy. Astronomy is a physical science which maps, which charts out the movement of the stars. So it will tell you today the star will be here, tomorrow will be there. This is of course permissible. What is impermissible is astrology in which you try to derive what will happen in the future. You try to extract from the movements of the stars your future. And this is something which clearly has been prohibited uh, in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And another aspect, the zodiacal signs as well. The signs of the zodiac, the 12 signs of the zodiac, they are just a type of astrology. It is the same thing. Every person supposedly he is born on a certain day, he is assigned a certain sign. And this is all from the pagan traditions of the Romans of old. And it is pure and blatant shirk. Because you are trying to look into the future. The Prophet ﷺ said, Sunan Abi Dawood, he said that whoever learns any astrology has learnt magic. And the more he learns of astrology, the more he learns of magic. This is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said. This is because, once again, our hearts, instead of going out to Allah, instead of trusting Allah, believing in Allah, knowing that He is the all-powerful, almighty, nothing happens except with His will, instead our heart goes out to imaginary things. What are the zodiacal signs? Nothing. They are the creations of Allah. They are signs in the sky. They are stars in the sky. So to put our hope, our trust, our fear in them is diverting an act of worship to them as well. In fact, not only is it prohibited to practice astrology, to practice magic, it is even prohibited to read about it, including astrology. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever goes to a fortune teller, whoever visits a fortune teller and asks him about anything, will have his prayer rejected for 40 days. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever goes to a fortune teller and he believes in him, then he has disbelieved in what has been revealed upon Muhammad ﷺ. Notice the difference. You go to a fortune teller, your prayer is rejected for 40 days. You believe in him, you have committed shirk, so you become a disbeliever. Because you now trust someone else. You believe that this person knows everything. You believe that the fortune teller can predict the future. And no one knows the future except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in the Quran, that no one knows what will happen tomorrow. No one knows when someone will die. No one knows where he will die, much less when, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, when you open up a newspaper and you find the zodiacal signs being discussed, and what good or bad will happen to you, then this is exactly the same as going to a fortune teller. Because you are willingly, voluntarily, from your own will and basis, reading it. No one's telling you to read it. If you buy a newspaper and it has that section in it, don't even look at it. You will say, but I don't believe in it. The Prophet ﷺ has said clearly, whoever goes to a fortune teller will have his prayers rejected for 40 days. This is not trivial, brothers and sisters. It is not a joke. No one can predict the future except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can tell you what will happen tomorrow. No one can tell you when and how or why good or bad luck will come to you except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is of the knowledge of the unseen. So how come people go to these other people who are just as ignorant as them? Think about it, my dear brothers and sisters. These people, if they knew the future, why would they be charging you $5 or $2 to read your, your future? If they knew the future, they would become multi-millionaires, multi-billionaires, become the presidents of the world. But because they don't, and they want to make money by cheating other people, they pretend to know the future, and they charge a few measly cents, a few measly coins, in order to supposedly tell the future. Which shows you their own ignorance. If they really and truly knew the future, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing right now. They'd be investing in the right stock markets. They'd be, be in the right place at the right time to, to gain the fortune. They'd be able to find all the fortunes of the world. Of course, these people are frauds, ignorant people. 
trying to attain money through unlawful means by tricking the people the innocent people around them and by going to them by believing in them a Muslim disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you believe in them then you are claiming that this person knows the unseen that this person controls the future that this person can tell me what will happen and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this so what is the protection that we have what can we do to protect ourselves from black magic the western world quote unquote they think that there's something called black magic and something called white magic so they say black magic is bad magic and white magic is good magic black magic is done to harm someone and white magic is done to save that harm or correct that harm or do some good but both magics involve procuring the jinn both magics involve doing something to appease them by giving them sacrifices by prostrating by doing sacrilegious acts these type of people are evil people they do sacrilegious blasphemous acts acts that are purposely done in order to appease the jinn they might tell the person to sacrifice an animal in his name or they might tell him to a'udhu billah go to the masjid and urinate in the masjid or a'udhu billah take the a, a, a quran and put it in a place it should not be put in sacrilegious evil blasphemous acts so when a person does this and proves his devotion to the jinn then the jinn in return does some favors to him trivial favors brings him something out of nowhere does something that is physically it is capable of doing but we are not capable of doing so the way to protect ourselves from magic is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why surah al-farq and surah al-nas were revealed the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was afflicted with this magic he recited surah al-farq and surah al-nas he blew on his hand and then he rubbed his hand all over his body this is the way to protect ourselves from black magic using the adhkar and the remembrances found in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah. We conclude by stating that magic in all of its branches, including astrology and the zodiacal signs, there are forms and manifestations of shirk. To practice them, or to study them, or to believe in them, are acts of major shirk. But even to read about them, or to go to such people without believing in them, this is a major sin. And a sin which the Prophet ﷺ has told us that for 40 days our prayers will not be accepted. This is because when one's heart becomes attached to these people and these beings. And one believes that they know the knowledge of the unseen. And one believes that they have the power to bring good or to divert evil. And this is only something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do. And therefore, the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and the Sunnah, they have clearly, explicitly prohibited all types and all forms of magic.